to experience the uncensored conversations, stimulating wit, and the thought-provoking wisdom. Bold, raw, and uncut. Right now, on The Lance Curve Show. Welcome everyone to another episode of Keston's Corner with Brother Keston. That sounds kind of corny maybe, I don't know, but I like that, right? <laughs> um, we just finished having a really profound round table on the square table conversation and brother Keston really went deep. We had to cut it short to bring it to you. Yesterday, I told everybody that we were going to have something with Keston, brother Keston yesterday, but circumstances pulled us away. Um, he had things to do. We had things to do and it worked out for the best because he's here now. We can't have a weekend go by without brother Keston being on brother Keston. Thanks yes, again. My brother. And I'm fired up after what you said earlier. Uh, uh, I mean, the title of this program pretty much says it all, but I want us to flow in that direction and let's just keep on going on. Yeah, because, you know, this is very, very important what we're discussing here. I mean, we had another conversation um, a week or back about this, um, about religion. You know what I'm saying? So to follow up on that, basically, with what's going on right now and what is religion doing for you as an individual. This is where we have to realize, okay, the importance, the importance of seeing that religion has not done anything for us as black people more than stripped us of wealth. You know what I'm saying is religion yes. has stripped the black community of wealth. Yes. That's part of the, the issue that we face. That's part of the issue that we don't want to see it that way, you know, be, because, you know, the, the sad thing about this we are so entrapped by this systematic system of religion. We are so trapped in it that we defend it at all costs. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying is? Yes. We defend it at every cost that comes to us. It doesn't matter. We find excuses after excuses for these pastors and for these religious organizations, even when they are oppressing us, downpressing us, controlling us and making us feel we are less than we defend them that's right my point is that anytime you're in any kind of organization and as one brother say we were having a conversation day to day and you have to left your brain outside the door when you are going into this building then something is wrong with that if you are not for instance imagine going to school and when you get to the school door, you left your brain outside the door. What are you going to learn? <laughs> what are you truly going to be accomplished there? You see, you know, because you're going to study for something or to be something. So you must be fully engaged. That's right. When it comes to religion, most of us are not fully engaged. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the people who are fully engaged when they go inside the church... And they start to hear all of these things, the lies and the things that don't add up. Okay? They start to ask questions. So now when they question in these things, guess what? They are looked down on. Oh, you shouldn't question this. You shouldn't question that. Mm -hmm. Because God is going to reveal it in due time to you. You see what I'm saying is, that's the kind of answer that they come up with. So... Is that good enough for you? Because the problem what I have with all of this is, you are going off a belief and a faith system. Okay? You don't know. There is no knowledge there. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. You only read whatever. Okay. When I was going to church, okay, <laughs> <laughs> there was a song that it talks about you must trust and obey because there's no other way to be happy in jesus you must trust and obey that's a song that <laughs> most of these religions sing okay so because you're trusting and obeying in a system of religion the reality is that is where your problem is right there. That is a large part of your problem because you're obeying something 
that you don't know. You are trusting in something that you have no hard evidence on. No facts. Okay. Mm -hmm. To get down to the real basic of this, what I'm saying now, if we as black people, and I, and I think this is very important, we need to look at our community. Okay. And, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm asking people sometime before we comment or we criticize is to think. Because my thing is, I am here to make you think. And so I want people to think before they react. Because lots of time as black people, we react before we think. Look at your community. When you look at your community and you see how torn down your community is, okay? When you see the violence in your community, when you see the, the, the police killing of young black men in your community, why is it that we are not asking these religious leaders and these churches, what is it that they're going to do about it? And uh, uh, what has you seen the church done about these police shooting in young black men in America? What, what, what have you seen the church done? Organization by organization. What have they done? And, and, and these are the questions that I want to put out there because I want an answer. I want people to answer these questions because, again, if religion is a wonderful thing, why is it that, and, and you don't have to belong to the church. Right. You shouldn't have to belong to the church. Right. Because the church says that they are trying to get everybody, right? They're trying to get everybody on the side of Jesus, okay? Is that right? <laughs> You're right. So what, what happened to the church when a young guy like Trayvon Martin was killed? What happened to the church? Where was the church? Where, where was the religion in the black community? Oh, let me tell you firsthand, Brother Keston, um, for a fact, I know that there were organizations. There was one called Peacekeepers, I believe, right? And they went around to all, most of the black churches. And I got this firsthand information concerning the Trayvon Martin murder. And they went around to all of the black churches and said, listen, please keep your people from getting upset. Keep your people from getting destructive or violent or reacting in a way that is not good, please. So they knew who to go to. They went to the pastors. But that is what this organization went around to, and, and this, these were white folks going to black pastors saying this and this is what I got because I was up at the courthouse with the video camera when it went down with the case so this is what I heard from trusted sources and um, they know who helps to control the black community and they get paid well and they get lots of perks there you go my brother but that's what I'm saying religion in the black community is a gatekeeper to black people that's right. The gatekeeper to your knowledge, the gatekeeper to your suffering, they are your gatekeeper. Everybody else is allowed to gain wealth in this system, in this world that you live in. Mm -hmm. Every nation. Look, and, 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 and again, people need to think before they, they react. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Because when you look in your community... What you are seeing, what I'm saying is that you look at places like Chicago. Mm -hmm. Okay, if religion was this wonderful thing, <laughs> remember, you have, you have to remember, we have to remember this, brothers and sisters. The, 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 it, in black community, there's more churches more than any other community. That's right. And all of us that is here, Tonight in the chat room are, are, are out there anywhere listening. You know that to be the case. Mm -hmm. But we have to look again and question these things. We, we, we got we to gotta stop leaving our brains at the church door. Because that is what's wrong with us. Because I'm going to tell you, you, you guys something. Tomorrow, tomorrow, if all of us who claim to be religious get rid of these churches and these religion that is ampering and impeding our progress as black people, we would be 
amazed the difference we would see. We would be amazed. What we have to realize that these people who are who we call white supremacy, they are very clever in the way that they keep black people down. They are very clever. Because I said before, we are spiritual people. And they recognize that if you don't give black people something to replace their spirituality, you cannot control or keep them conquer or keep them in bondage. We are more religious than everybody else. Why is that the case? Have you ever asked yourself that question? Because you're a spiritual person. Yes. And you're looking to get back to who you are and where you are. And the fact that you don't know that religion will never lead you to that place. Religion will never lead you to where you need to be. Because it, they make sure that knowledge, true knowledge, is they make sure that you don't know true knowledge, you never learn true knowledge through religion, because they know that if they do, if they allow that to happen, then you will realize what's going on and turn the whole place upside down. With the quickness. Exactly. And so that's why I say we must come into ourselves. And the moment we come into ourselves, because these people know that you, as the black man and the black woman, are the God and the goddesses of this system. And when I use the terminology God, because I use it because most people out there are still into the God thing. Okay? <laughs> So that's the reason why I use it, my brothers and sisters. I don't use that in that term for myself because I believe in the creator. Yes. I don't believe in this God thing that, you know, that, that, that these people come up with. Okay? Because what I know to be the creator and what they're calling God is two different things. Their perception of God and my perception of God is two different things. Okay? The creator is within you. It's within me. We are part of the hall. Okay, look at religion, my brothers and sisters, and see how they are prospering. No matter how poor your community is, that religion, those religion in your community are prospering. Mm -hmm. They live well. They drive nice cars. They live in nice houses. They can afford to send their children to school, but you can't. Because you're living on the edge. And you're bringing 10% of whatever you're making to give to that religion. That religion, in turn, never pay a dime in taxes. Not even a penny in taxes. Uh -huh. But even after you give them 10%. Remember, your money was taxed up front. Tell it. You give them, after the government tax you ready, you give the religion 10% of what is left. Okay, now you have bills to pay. You have children. Most of us have children to feed. You have a family to take care. You have responsibility. You might have car payments and all these different things. Does your religion come in and help you in your shortfall in your bills? When you are not able, your children or your child may have to drop out of school or take some breaks off of school because you don't have the money to keep them going in school. Where is your religion? Nowhere in sight. When the tax man said to you, this year you owe me money, where is your religion? It's supposed to be your saving grace. And when they start to build a new building, oh, we need a bigger church now, brothers and sisters. 
Now, in, aside from that 10% that you're paying them out of your salary, and I don't know if it's still, if it's still 10% because they might tell you it's 20% now because inflation has gone up. Okay? So it might be 20%. I don't know. I haven't been to no church in a very long time. Okay? So they might be raising that up now. Okay? So you have to, to start to look into these things deeply. When they want a bigger church, okay, they still come to you after 10%. And they tell you, well, brothers and sisters, we need a bigger building. So you're going to have to pledge that you're going to give this amount every week or once a month. They don't care how you get it. Even if they, you have to go and take out a second mortgage on your home. Because that's God money and you don't mess with it. You see what I'm saying? That's right. And we find it all the time. But no matter how we as individuals are suffering, the religion, your pastor, your, your elders, or whoever they are, they will say, brother, you need to pray a little bit harder. You need to have more faith. <laughs> Now, here is it that you're suffering. They have money. If you are in the community and you have a business and the business, you know, something happened. You can't go to your religion and say, help my business to stand up because I'm trying to help people in the community. Mm -hmm. Because they, their employment depends on me. Because they have bills to pay also. Where, where is your religion when you're in your time of crisis? Here's the situation. You have a dead loved one in your family. Okay? When you contact the church to do a funeral service, you're going to have to pay. But you are, that person that died is a member of that church. The pastor needs to get paid to preach over that dead person. And then also, during that time, okay, a collection plate is being passed around in the funeral service. Now you imagine that. That's crazy. You see <laughs> how we have been duped? Now this is your time of mourning. And they're still taking advantage of you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say, tell me what your religion has done for you up to this point. Because what I know for sure, that all these religions did nothing more than enslave you. And the enslavement that religion have you under is enslavement of the mind. Enslavement of the mind. That is what your religion has done for you. And it is the greatest form of enslavement. When, you, uh, when our, four, our ancestors was in slavery, our foreparents were in slavery... They know what was going to happen to them. The beatings and the, the rapes and all these different things. This is what I'm saying. But religion come at you in a covert way. Undercover. When you read, and that's why I, you know, you know, that's why I said, you hear me say this before, Lance. That 85% of people who claim to be Christian has never read the Bible. That's a sad state of affairs. Because what I'm saying is, any one of these people who's saying that what I'm saying is not the truth, I want them to challenge me on that because I want, I want to take the same Bible that they have, okay? And show them that even these things that these these pastors and whoever you want to call your leader in your church is preaching does not coincide or line up with the scripture that they are that they are that you that you believe in. That's right. The pastors nowadays are some of 
the rich people in society are some of the richest people in society. Okay? They have more Lear jets more than movie stars. <laughs> but yet, the man that you say you are a follower of, he says, and that's, this is not my word. I can take it to the Bible and show you. He says, bird of heaven have roofs, foxes of den, but the son of man had no place to rest his head. <laughs> so how does that coincide with the man that you're supposed to be following as your leader? He said, I set the example for you. And so what I do, you must do likewise. So how does that line up? With your, your, your religion and your organization. The organization is supposed to be poorer than the people who are in the organization. Because you are the sheep. And the shepherd is supposed to look after the sheep. <laughs> if, if any man, and we got to be reasonable here. If any man give you some sheep to look after. Okay? Give you a whole pen of sheep. Hundreds of sheep. And say to you, listen. Your job is to make sure my sheep are well fed. And he come back there and you see all the sheep, they have diarrhea, they all kind of things wrong with them. You know, they, they're losing all their teeth, their hair is falling off, they have no wool that he can collect. Okay? <laughs> and they have no, no, no water and no grass. That's right. What do you think that he would do with you? So how come this God that you're telling me about, that you believe in, seeing all, knowing all, see what these people are doing to you and continue to do to you for decades and centuries and hundreds of years, <laughs> and he hasn't done anything about it? They are living high on the hog every day. <laughs> and you have to be eating dirt? Mm. How does that line up? With the so-called faith that you have. You see people sometimes. And they, they, they are just barely getting by. But they are telling you. Oh I have faith. God is going to mm. make it happen. Mm. But if you don't put hands. To the, to the plow. Shoulders to the wheel. That's right. There's nothing going to happen. Because the only time something is going to happen. Is when the God within you move you to do something. How did God within the next person move he or she to do something for you? <laughs> because he or she sense that you have a need because the God within them is working. But you are looking for a God up in the sky, <laughs> a heaven up in the sky, to send an angel down to bring you your relief. Are you believe that this heaven... One day you're going to go there and that's when you're going to get your reward. You see what I'm saying? We have to think. Reason. That's what is happening to us. We're not reasoning. We're not thinking. We, as I said many times before, that we will read all kind of books, all kind of novel huge amount of pages 2000 pages are 1500 pages okay books that we can't put down no matter how much page it, it is in there but the book that's supposed to give you life you have never read it it doesn't make any sense but yet you want to defend we want to defend this so called faith that we have we want to defend this belief system that we have because your religion said so Just because your religion says so. Is that what your religion has done for you and is doing for you? If that is what your religion is doing for you and has done for you, you need to stop going because you're wasting time. You could have been way ahead with all that money that you've given to religion. You could have a good savings Put up for your, for your retirement. Because if it is that what your religion is doing for you, you're in a lot of trouble. You see what I'm saying? So we have to be logical and we have to be reasonable. And when we look at the whole situation and see, you see, we see what is happening in our community. The crime, 
the violence. You see, all these things you're seeing with black people and our condition is getting worse and worse and yet we're hanging on to the greatest thing that has done one of the greatest damage to us as a people. Yes. You see what I'm saying? That is what has happened. And until we realize the importance of looking into this thing, really examine this thing and say, hey, something is wrong here, man. Something is wrong because my four parents believe this thing. They, they, their parents before them believe this thing because the slave master beat it into them. Okay? It is God's will that I slave you. Mm -hmm. And you believe that? And then you tell me that God is all love? So how come this God is all love? But if you, again, if you read the Bible and you see the things that, that this God tell them to do to other people, you can't say that God is all love. No. <laughs> Doesn't add up. You see what I'm saying? So we have to, we have to really dig deep. Question things, brothers and sisters. Don't just go off of these things. We go, oh, I got faith. I got no, anybody can have faith. Anybody can. Anybody can believe. But where is the evidence? You know what? Think about this. When you pray, you know what they tell you? Close your eyes. Why do you need to close your eyes? When did God give them that message? When, when this, this God that you believe, tell me in the Bible, where in this Bible that you read, that it ever say, close your eyes when you're praying. And, and when you're praying, they tell you, kneel down on your knees, close your eyes. So shouldn't I be looking up to heaven? Or wherever they call heaven? Give me some direction where it is, because I sure don't know. We should be, they say it's up in the sky, so you should be looking up there. If you're praying to this God that is in heaven. You follow what I'm saying? So, it doesn't add up. Is you playing a trick on me? Because i supposed to close my eyes and imagine. Imagine that here is this God up in heaven. All the angels gather around him. And he's going to send one of them to answer my prayer. Simple as that. See what I'm saying? I, and, I, and this is the thing. And they tell you, again, what they say. Faith without works is dead. They're giving you the clue that you need to go and work. Because you ain't going to get nothing. <laughs> they, I'm, I'm telling you, the Bible is all code. They tell you, faith without works is dead. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. You go back and you look into the Bible. I'm just showing you a few of the code. Isn't there something? They say the wages sin pay is debt. If the wages sin pay is debt, how the hell can you be burning up in a hellfire when you're dead? So if there's such a thing as sin, when you die, you pay for it. So how are you going to, this is called double jeopardy. It's like taking a man and putting <laughs> him in prison twice for the same crime. That's right. So they're telling you all these things in a coded way that there's no such thing that they're telling you. It reveals itself. But you believe it. Mm -hmm. Because you're not thinking. You see what I'm saying? You're not thinking. We just run with things and we tell people, oh, this is what my pastor said. But what do you say? What do you say? You That's see, right. this is what my religion says. What do you say? Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about your religion, that means you have no say. Do you know that? You have no say. When you speak that this is what my religion taught me, this is what, what about you? Do you, do you believe that? Do you know that to be the truth for yourself? Does it resonate with you on the inside? Or does something in you telling you, this is all lies. But you're ignoring it. This is what I'm saying. You're ignoring it. 
So this is where we as individual must allow ourselves to think. Don't be afraid of the question that your spirit is asking. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things with us as a people. We are afraid of the question that our inner being, our inner fiber is saying to ask, but ask this question because something is wrong. That's right. We have to come off of that. There's no logic in not reasoning out the situation. Religion will tell you, you don't need to reason it out. <laughs> How come when you have a particular problem that have nothing to do with religion, you have to reason it out? So why is your religion telling you that you don't need to reason it out because we have the answer and we're going to give it to you? All your religion is doing for you is nothing but injustice. It is one of the biggest form of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. They create a system to keep you trapped. And most of us as black people has fallen for the trap. We are fall. You, you know, when I see young people these days, and, and even though they go into church, when you talk to them, they have no confidence in the truth in the church. They will tell you, I got a lot of questions. And I'm one of the person, when they have question, I'm going to, you know what, help them with the best of my ability. <laughs> That's right. To give them some answer to those questions. Because the fact is that I know their religion is misleading them. That's what I'm saying is. I, I, I'm not with this belief system and this faith system. <laughs> that doesn't do anything for you or me. Your parents before your parents believe, and their parents before them, and their parents before them believe. And what is, where, where's the faith? Where is it leading? It is misleading you down a pathway that you really don't want to go. And when you look into yourself, you see, and question things, see the realization of what life is all about. The answers is always within you. We have to stop, look to other sources for the answers. That is the biggest mistake that we can make as a people is to look to other sources for the answer. We all come here on this planet fully capable of self-govern. Mm -hmm. People, what religion teach you? That some people are sheep. Nobody is a sheep. That's a fact. People are taught to be sheep. From the moment you are born, you start being trained to become a sheep. That the, oh, some people are leaders. No, some people just decide that they're not going to become sheep. That's right. Their strong spirit propel them away from that kind of thinking. That the, oh, we gotta you 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 can't train leaders. They, they gotta be born. Everybody is a leader. They just don't know it. Isn't that a sad state of affair? That's why you have this thing with kings and queen and all these different people that come and want to run things, president and prime minister, because if they don't do that, they have no control, they have no power. So they must create a power system. That's what these people have done. They create a power system by means of politics and religion, because it's the same thing they tell you in politics. We must be able to lead our rule over you. Mm -hmm. The same thing is with religion. They have a hierarchy in every religion. And, and you prove to me that there's not a hierarchy system. It is no different from president and prime minister. Okay? Because they have the, the, the pastor. They have a body of elders. Or they have these different people. They have secretary. They have all kinds of different committees. In the church, just the same thing you have in politics. It's no different. Because politics, white supremacy, is what set up religion. They set up religion as a control mechanism for the people. If they don't set up these control mechanisms, then they can't have full rulership over the people. Because if, they, if this, if, for instance, if religion was not in place, 
people, black people especially, would know who they are already a long time ago. So this is, this is very dangerous. You see, so when we're in religion and think we're learning anything, no, we're not. We are learning to be controlled. We are under their spell. That's what you are under and not recognizing it. You see, if you don't realize that the government is a part of this, then something is wrong with you. The banking system is a part of it. Something is wrong with you because who most people, most of us out there believe that when it comes to the banking system, okay, that it is not a part of religion. It is a part of religion. Okay, for instance, when you say the IRS, who, who is these people? Who is the IRS? Who is the Fed? The Fed is not your government. It's not the federal government. It's just a way to throw you off. It's a private banking system. Yes. That's what it is. Private. They determine your interest rate. They determine everything. It's not your government deciding for you. If you see how entangled the system is, they are the ones that decide that religion is going to be tax-free. Your government don't decide that. You see what I'm saying? Because the money, they're going to benefit from that money that the church is taking in. Where, 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 do, you where do your church take their money on a Monday morning? Does the religion have a bank? No. They take it to the bank of white supremacy. <laughs> so they benefit all the way around. So we have to wake up and start to think and reason because the fact is this is what is happening to you, but you won't, you won't open your eyes because we are too lazy to do that. <laughs> and most of us are, have been lulled to sleep a very long time ago. And we used to the pacifier like a baby being put in our mouth and we're sucking on it and saying, oh, yes, this is the truth. Well, we know it's a, it's a flat out lie. And that's what religion does. They're your pacifier. Every time something happened in the black community, the government used religion to pacify you that you don't react. So they are your gatekeeper in every way. They are your gatekeeper to revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay? They are your gatekeeper to enlightenment. They are your gatekeeper to knowing yourself. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what they have done to you. That's what they have done to us as a people. Handicapped us. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we are not proactive. You see what I'm saying? We can't be. Look at black people. No matter how much of us police shoot, there is no action. There's no action. We, we stand there like, oh Lord, another one, another one, another one of our sons and our daughter. And that's it. Like a deer in the headlights. You see. We just take it and take it and take it because you're gatekeeper. You're pacifier. The church is there to keep you in check. Because you must wait on Jesus. You must endure to the end. God will do it for you. That's the problem, black people. We need to get up from off our lazy seat and realize that the God is within you. And that's the only time you're going to get any help is when you stand up for what you believe in. And when you take action. Because truth must be revealed. And now we are living in the age. You see, where knowledge is being revealed. What are you going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? Are we just going to let it waste? Are we going to keep believing and holding on to the things that is keeping us down? When are we going to come out of the sleep that we are in? We, we, we need to. 
You see, we are the most creative people on this planet. We are the creators. We are. All you have to do is just look. We don't get credit for it. That's all there is to that, brothers and sisters. We don't get credit for the people that we truly are. So it's time for us to get into gear and stop allowing these religion to keep us where we are. Because there is no progress. There is no prosperity in it. They are in fully in line with the governments. You know, for instance, let me show you. Mm -hmm. In Jamaica, a few years ago, uh, uh, quite a few number of years ago, when this guy, what they call Dudas Coke, right? He was some Dan, you know, or whatever they call him. And guess who was one of the people that was high? They find, when they was looking, they, the government was looking for this guy. Who was concealing him? A religious leader. See that? Wow. You see what I'm saying? Mm. A religious leader was trying to help him to get away. <laughs> you see, again, my brother, mm. we have to question these things. And I look at this community, even in a country like Jamaica, where there's more church per capita more than anywhere else. <sighs> Tell me about okay? it. Okay? <laughs> but when you look at what is happening in that country, in the sense where... You know, you get the guns and all these things and, and young people killing each other. Where is religion? What is reli If religion was this good thing, how come it's not doing something about that? How come it's not giving these young people direction? How come your religion is not setting up places in this community, are pushing the government to set up places in this community that these young people can go to work and go to school? How come? It, it, shouldn't there be God in that or Jesus in that? But your religion is always tell you, wait until Jesus come and he will fix it. Well, I can tell you this. You got a long wait. Believe me. You have a very, very long wait, my brothers and sisters. You're right about that. <laughs> you see, because a lot of people has been waiting for Jesus, man. But ain't nobody seen the guy yet. This is what I'm saying. Ain't nobody. Mm. People tell, oh, Armageddon is coming. Yeah, Armageddon is coming. Because the people who write these things and put them in the Bible, you see, these are the ones that is going to create the Armageddon to control you. Mm -hmm. To kill off millions of you. That's what they are doing. They are fulfilling this, this so-called Bible. When people say, oh, the Bible is being fulfilled. Yeah, they are making sure that it is. <laughs> because they are your God and your Jesus. Okay? Black people... The, the same people who, who enslave you write a book and give it to you and you never question it. Mm. Isn't that some serious... That's some serious... What's wrong with us, man? Slave ship Jesus. The same people who has enslaved us and done everything under the sun that is bad to us and he even put in this same book. That slave must be obedient to their master even when they're treating you harshly. Turn the other cheek. You must turn the other cheek according to Jesus. No matter how many times they slap you. And that's what black people keep doing. Nobody else is turning the other cheek except black people. <laughs> Show me another nation of people that is turning the other cheek. You tell me if white supremacy that wrote the Bible is turning the other cheek. Where, show me one instant where white supremacy has turned the other cheek to anybody who, who come across, they come across. And most of the time, nobody else is messing with them. Right. And they are the one that telling you about this Jesus and the message of peace that he's carrying. Ten commandments. You imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> Do not steal. You see. But they steal everything wherever they go. Do exactly. Not, do not kill. Because they don't believe in it. There you go. But you're supposed to. But you see, wh wh where did they get this, this thing from about Ten Commandments? These are things that came out of Egypt, came out of Kemet. 
But most of us as black people, we don't know that because we're not searching for any kind of knowledge. That's right. So it's many of those things written there, but they only give you those ones that they wanted to. You see what I'm saying? And they don't, oh, yeah, the, 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 the prophets and, and these ones come up with these things. Moses come down with the Ten Commandments. We're, kidding me? <laughs> Moses, Moses did he, there's no existence of Moses when these things came about. Okay? And you go down to Egypt and check for yourself. You see what I'm saying? Go listen to brothers. Brother Ben. You see what I'm saying? Dr. Ben, all these brothers that have mm -hmm. done the research. Brother Walter Williams, these brothers, they have done the research. Go listen to these brothers. Pay some attention, man. Get up off this thing that is enslaving and controlling you. That's what we need to do. That's right. We have to come to that where we free our own mind. Religion is never going to free you. It is making sure that you are held in bondage until the day you die. Guaranteed. That's what religion is for. Because you're going to go to heaven. You see, and you fully engage and believe the bullshit about the streets of gold and all that, all that crap. The streets of gold, milk and honey. Give me a break. You can have all the milk and honey on earth if you want. <laughs> okay, if that, if that's what you like, milk and honey. You can get all of it right here. Why wait till you get to heaven? And if you want to be a spirit in heaven, if God is a spirit, what, what the hell is going to drink milk and honey? <laughs> <laughs> really and, and these people tell oh yeah one day New Jerusalem is going to come down from heaven and you believe all of that you, you believe that the God is going to send down this whole new city there <laughs> and her from heaven <laughs> wow <laughs> you know <laughs> we have been seriously bamboozled <laughs> We have been seriously dope, man. Mm -hmm. Because we are not thinking. You see what I'm saying? And that's why I like to engage with my brothers and sisters because I have questions for you. I have questions to ask you. If you are one of these religious fanatics and one of these religious believers, I want you to ask me any question you want. And I will, and I will sh share my knowledge with you and I will reason with you because my point is that we need to know. They don't want reason. They want emotions. But that's the thing. When you go to church, what they do? They stir up your emotion. Isn't that what they do? They got to get your emotion in gear. That's why you, they want you to leave. Before you come inside the church, you must leave your, your, your knowledge out there, leave your sense of reasoning out there, and just come in the church and sit down. Leave your consciousness at the door. Everything outside. And let God do the talking and the Bible and the pastor and Jesus. And then everything will be all right. So whatever they say, you're, gonna, you're not going to resist it. You're not going to question it. You're just going to go with the program. Because it must be so if Jesus said it. You imagine that. Wow. You know. But what we're going to do, brothers and sisters, I mean, we'll open up the line for a few minutes. Yes. And, um, you know, if anyone want to call in, we can talk a little bit. Conference unlocked. You know. 888-575-3769. 888-575-3769. You know, because it's important that we dialogue. It's important that we talk. Okay? I don't want to just feel like I'm talking at you, but I want to, you to get involved in this. Because it involves all of us. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It involves all of us as individuals. So we must engage we must talk to those in our community that we've seen, uh, those that are being misled. There's some people, we have to be real and realistic, that there are some people that is not going to come out from underneath the spell of religion or the bondage of religion. Mm -hmm. They're not going to do that. So those ones, you can't help them. So you have to leave them alone and let them stay where they're at. 
You see what I'm saying? We are dealing with seekers. We are dealing with seekers. And when people seek, they are seeking knowledge. They are seeking truth. So we have to give those people an opportunity. You see what I'm saying? To come forward. We can reason with people who are conscious. You see what I'm saying? Trying to reason with a person who is unconscious is a waste of time. <laughs> but we reason with people who are conscious, who are searching for knowledge, who are searching for truth. Because it's important that we, we engage that way. And I think for us, as a people, that's what I'm afraid of, rather. That's what I'm afraid of. We are not coming to step out of our out of this fear that we live in. Because once we let go of religion, we feel like we're gonna drop to a bottomless pit that it will never end. That's what that's what we that's how we live. We can't let go of something that is crippling us and is paralyzing us. Because we feel like if we let go of this thing that is doing that to us, we have nothing else to hold on to. You see, that's the thing, brothers and sisters. We have to realize the importance of making sure that when somebody comes to us with these things, we check them. We question. We ask question because if we don't ask question, we're not going to get the true answers. And if they don't have the answers, then we need to move on to something else. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So we have to make sure. We just want to reason with you on these topics. Because like I said, it is one of the biggest gatekeepers for us as a people. And if anyone believes that is not the truth, then let's speak about it. Brother Kojo, is that you on the line? You already know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beginning to memorize your number somewhat. Peace, my brother. What's good, Brother Kester? See? Starting it again. Go ahead, my brother. Man, look, please continue to keep banging on this religion, man. Like, like I always say, man, this is the very thing that's holding us back. You know, people want to hold on to it and think that it's okay. Like, oh, well, Jesus was black. It says this, it says that. No. When you understand the historical context of how this religion was given to us, you won't want to have anything to do with it. You know what I'm saying? So just to honor our ancestors and the things that they went through, leave that shit alone. Like that's all I gotta say. No, I you know, brother Kojo, let me tell you something. You're absolutely right, my brother. Because the fact is that, you know, we're living in, in a world, and it's sad to say, I think more, now more than ever, you know, people are in this world that they allow all the gadgets and all of the different things that they have been given to keep their thoughts suppressed. Um, you know, at a point when people used to reason, when people used to ask questions, and I, and I think that that's why I could say when I grew up, you know, a lot of Rastafarians, they was um, looked down on pretty much. They have a religious system. I, I'm not a religious person, be, be honest with you. But they have a system of belief. Um, and a lot of people did not agree with them. Um, but there's different um, level of this Rastafarian and different um, beliefs in Rastafarian. I, you know, for me personally, a lot of those things I never give in to because the fact is that, you know, I'm a person who searched through things. And if, if the thing is good, then I'll take it. And if it's bad, then I'll leave it alone. You see, so you have to search and you have to keep the search. You can't, you can't give up. Yeah. You see, and, and, and one song that I remember personally that Bob Marley sing, and I always, you know, I remember when I was younger, I used to grapple with that song. You know, and just one sister the other day expressed the same thought that she used to grapple with that song. He says, Bob Marley says, if you know what life is worth, you will look for yours on earth. 
Some people say that great God will come from the sky, take away everything, and make everybody feel high. You see, but when he go into the part where he say, Almighty God is a living man, in the sense what he is talking about, that the God is within you. You see what I'm saying? The God is within us because we are part of the all. You see what I'm saying? Life is work, you will look for yours on earth. Hello? Hello? Okay, hello. Oh, I'm sorry. I think I've got... Yeah, we got 850 on the line. You do have um your computer or tablet or gadget on in the background. Just mute it so we don't oh, have no. the feedback. Okay. Thank you so much. And you can join on in. We have Brother Kojo here. And, of course, Brother Keston with us here. Welcome. Go ahead, my sister. Thank you. This is Jay Logic. Jay Logic! Thanks for blessing us with yes. your with your voice. Yes, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Do I just wait until I'm queued in? Or... No, go ahead, my sister. You're in right now, live. The world can hear you. Okay, um, brother, I have a question. Um, I struggle between the definition of, and I, I know we're talking about the church and religion, but I'm I'm a spiritual person, and I'm not a religious person. But I'm a, I'm a spiritual person. My relationship is kind of like the relationship with, you know, like like the earth, the sun, and what our functions are individually. So I just want to know what you your take on that is. Well, my sister, that's what you need to do, really, be honest with you. If more of us was doing that, okay? Because if we become in tune with ourself and, and our spirituality... Okay, because again, as I said before, African people are not religious people. African people, really, and our ancestors were, were spiritual people, not, not religious people, not Christian people. Christianity was to take away your spirituality. And, and, and until we recognize that, my sister, we have realized the importance of, of the earth, of Mother Earth. The earth, you see, look, look at it this way. Let me explain something to you about the earth, and I'm sure you, you're familiar with this, but... The hurt is alive. Many people don't, don't, don't understand that and appreciate that. We could not be living on a dead planet. It would make any sense. Because everything that you put into her will grow and produce. It's just like, you know, uh, one of our sisters. We could put it in the same application. Okay? Receive the sperm and what happened? Then come forth an offspring. The same process with Mother Earth. So when we become unified with the Earth, because we are part of the all, we are part of the Almighty, all of us are in the circle of life. You follow what I'm saying? So I do. In, in that sense, my sister, you are on the path. You see? And, and that's the things that we have to realize that once we, we don't want to, to have people make us question ourselves, the people out there who are wrapped up in this Christianity, because they are not on any path. The only path they are on is a path to destruction. That's basically what, what they are. Because if you don't come into yourself and come into the true knowledge, that's where you're going to remain. You see what I'm saying? So we are looking for things. Yeah, so what you're saying, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, so what you're saying is that you kind of agree with me that it, it, it's almost as if they're looking towards a being versus uh, the universe as a whole. Yes. And that being a spiritual, the spiritual God, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We, because because the thing is that look like a, like this is another thing I tell people. I said the universe. One of the thing that I know, I've come to know. That the universe, when people say in laws, I don't go for laws because men make laws. The universe work of a principle because principle cannot be changed. It cannot be broken. So the universe is governed by principle. Principle says that the sun is going to rise tomorrow morning. So it's a principle that you cannot change. Man laws, you can change them, you can amend them, you can do anything you want with them. But a principle can never be changed. So the universe goes off a principle. Whatever is set into motion is going to be that way. If you follow what I'm saying. 
So the universe is going to see, like now we're living in a time when we see things happening and most of us are grappling and wondering why. But the universe is going to see that justice is rendered and the scale of justice is to be balanced. Because it's been way off balance for a very long time. So what so is happening? Are you saying that, that I'm no, sorry. No, go ahead. So are, are you saying that people are, are kind of like going off principle, which is kind of like a law? So if, Okay, so if, if principle is a law, they're, they're kind of using religion as a law versus just do, going off the spiritual sense of the universe. Exactly. That's what, I'm saying, what I'm saying. Is, yeah, because what I'm saying is man make up all these laws based off of the principles that, that govern the universe, mm -hmm. if you follow my drift. Oh, okay. Oh, I got it now. Yeah, they, 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 they make laws trying to copy off the principle that is set in motion. Mm -hmm. So that's why you never see we, we, people say, oh, do you, this law, this, that law. No, the universe is based on principle because you cannot change a principle. Okay. You know. Well, I have another question. Sure. What do you think about, like, when something happened in the black community, and then, like, like the, the, the kid that went in the church and he shot everyone? Right. And then the, the black community were always so forgiven. I found myself mad. I didn't find myself forgiving at that point. I cannot forgive you in that, that point. It's, it's kind of like the black community. We're, we're so forgiving. But we don't get that in return because Come people, we get locked up or we get followed or, sh or shot. Right. But, but do you know why you feel that way, my sister? Why? Okay. Because you have come into knowledge. Okay? You have come into consciousness. You see, the fact is, that's what I'm saying is, if you, if you think about this, that religion is our gatekeeper to knowledge and to self-preservation and all these different things. The, the, the religion, every time there's something go wrong in the black community, who does these governmental force come to to see that justice is not served? Isn't it your religious leaders? I don't know, really. I just, I don't know. I keep thinking of things like that, and, and plus the Nike truck that was parked in Chicago. I just keep getting pictures of those in my head. But they, but I, I think they do come to the religious community because we're no, they know that we're going to forgive. Well, you know, that we're, we're going to be like, oh, I, I, I forgive, and I forgive the gave the person who shot my auntie, my uncle, and all of them. And, and I, I just, I'm not there. And I'm just not there, and it and it upsets me so, you know. Well, I and I can I can I can understand what you're saying, my sister. But what I'm saying to you is this: what religion has taught black people is that they should wait on God and Jesus to resolve their problem. Yeah. We are loving people. Yeah. We are peaceable people, but we are also people who have great abilities. We are the people who was put here first on this planet. We are the creators. Okay? We are what they call the God, in, the God and the goddesses on this planet. What I'm saying is that in order for you to control the people who are the people who knows what's going on, you take away knowledge from them. So knowledge has been taken away from your people. So your people find themselves in a space where they are so dumbed down and control. That's why we do what we do, my sister, because nobody else, no other nation of people does these things. That makes sense. You see, so that's what, if you want to control, when they first go into Africa, they realize when they use these missionaries to go in there, they realize because these missionaries was not good people. People saying, the, oh, they're missionary good people. The missionaries go in there and the missionary help them to colonize Africa, to, to colonize and control black people. And so what, what, what did they, these people do? They go back and they report to their government and they tell them, listen, you got to take away their spirituality. That's the only way you're going to control them. 
And so because spirituality has been taken away from us as a people, that's why we find ourselves in the situation that we are today. That's why... So you're saying that spirituality has been substituted with religion. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Exactly. And so we are waiting on this God and Jesus to, 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 to take vengeance. Because if you read in the, in the same Bible, it says, God says, vengeance is mine and I will repay it. But these people who write the Bible and give it to you, look at what they have done to the world. Look at how many genocide they have committed. Look at how many people they have murdered in cold blood. Okay? All the time. But they are the ones that give you this religion and telling you that you must be, an, you, you must, when they slap you on one cheek, you must turn the other cheek. And we believe that. We be, we, unlocked. You know, you follow what I'm saying, my sister? I do. I okay. do. I hear what you're saying. I agree. Okay. You know, so, you know, I hope I, I, I answer your questions, I mean, the best of my ability. But that's what's going on in the world that we live. You know, so that's why. You have. And, and I, go ahead, sister. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, uh, you have. And, and I thank you for the time that you've given me. And hey, family. N not a problem, my <laughs> sister, anytime. Jay Logic in you the know. house. I'm, I'm glad to hear your voice. I'm glad you're here. And um, I just love this vibe. And, you know, this is what we do here. And um, it's a wonderful thing. I'm smiling. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's nice. I just want to interject that I'm like that guy who... um. It owns the restaurant, but the chef is here. The people are here. Everybody's enjoying themselves. And I just peek from the corner and say, wow, what an experience. And I appreciate all of you and all of your spirits here. I really, really do. This really makes my day. Trust me. Well, every time I hear you, Lance, it's like the chance is here. The chance is here. <laughs> oh, like with Muhammad Ali, right? <laughs> I'm going to get that sound bite and put it on. <laughs> Even though you know there's no ego here, it's all humble, you know what I mean? Because we're servants and I get in where I fit in. I'm just as comfortable in front of the camera as I am behind it. So, you know, whatever it takes, you know what I mean? Whatever it takes. This is This really validates all the things I've been through in life to come to this full circle and the only thing that i wish sometimes you know on a personal level just to give brother Kesson a break to get something to drink i just want to say that like the only thing i wish and i know they know my parents i wish they can see how far i've come even though they put a lot in me i wish they could like be sitting right here because there's some fascinating people and um i know everything's gonna be all right our energy is gonna be joined together on different levels but you know I i'm just doing you know, pulling out the seeds of what they put in me. And um, I'm just happy to be here and just how much of a blessing Mrs. Skurve is, how much of a blessing Brother Keston is. It's all, I mean, too much names to list here in the chat room. And those of you who are on the line, it's it's really wonderful. And this this pushes me harder. And this is this is what I desire. This is what I want. This This makes me feel so much at home. The solitude that it takes to create these things and do these things behind the scenes when I'm driving on the bus and I'm just thinking and, and I'm connected to all of you. Some of you have called and some of you haven't. Um, it's okay. So you just send me text messages, but it's just that, that, that unifying force that lets me know that everything is going to be all right, regardless as to what is going on in the world on an evil level. I know at the end of the day, we're going to be the winners and we are the winners and we must know that. So I thank you all. Well, you know what? I thank your parents, and they are thank here. You. And yes. what what does it they equate are. to? And Mister and Brother Kingston, Keston, thank yes. You, you guys, you, you know, <laughs> mine, and you guys are great. Even even though even the fam, I, I see them there, and I, I thank them for you know yes interacting. Yes, and if there's ever um. <laughs> Look at Kat, right? She said I would have bust out laughing. Oh, trust me, we'll, we'll have jokes at another time. But um, yeah, we're we're all here for each other, and it just it just does a lot for me. And um, like I said, I'm just very thankful. I'm just very very thankful, you know. And yes, uh, yes, Kat, I'll bust out laughing. <laughs> I gotta come down here and scoop you up, Kat. We gotta hit the streets and do some video. She's not too far. She's in, uh, I, I won't blow up where she is, but she's not too far. She's in Central Florida. And judging from your number, J-Logic, when I hit up the, that part of town, we're going to come and just find you and 
vibe with you whether you want to give them the camera or not. That's what we do here. You know what I mean? Because you're part of the family. Everybody here is part of the family. You know. <laughs> no problem. I want to meet. I want to meet Cat. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna do our thing. And remember, um, to all, I, I want Brother Keston to speak about September fifteenth. I can say it. I always say it. We're gonna be doing the graphics this week and and, and get those things up and out. But I'm going to put the camera back on Brother Kesson. I think he's uh, appropriately hydrated. And that's why I had to leave a couple of times. But I, my big head could not not get in front of the camera. But I'm going to let Kesson speak about uh, September 15th. And if anybody here wants to continue on with the conversation for a short while longer, feel free. And for everybody else, feel free to call in 875 uh, 888-575-3769. The lines are open. Trolls will be booted out. But I'm going to put the camera on Brother Keston, and we're going to speak about the event on September 15th down here in Orlando, Florida. Here we go. Yes, my brothers and sisters, um, we're going to be having um, an event at um, Three Mass um, at, uh, on September 15th. And um, it's going to you know, start off um, as um, entitled, where, where do we go from here? Because, you see, we're discussing these things, but we need to know what direction that we, we, we need to take. You see, so we have to come full circle. You see, and that's what we're going to be. So we're inviting brothers and sisters to come in, um, share with us, spend some time with us, you know, and vibes together. Because this is going to be involving all of us really as a people. So we must support each other. We must build. In, in this way, we are building our communities. An event that we're, we're, we're not going to be charging to, to come in. So you need to know that. Um, so, you know, we're going to be um, really vibing together. We have some brothers coming from out of town that is going to be there. And so we're going to be discussing all these good things. So please join us um, on September 15 at Tree Mass. Wow. Oh, we have um, any, anyone else? We, we have a Atlanta Oh, well, actually, George, I can't say Atlanta. Well, pretty much I can say Atlanta. Um, <laughs> do you want to say anything? Do you want to share anything? you want to speak if you want to? Don't let me blow you up no, now. No, thank you. No, thank you? Sure. <laughs> okay, no problem. At least you thank said you. no thank you. Some people just stay quiet or they get scared and say, oh, they saw me and just hang up. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. Can I ask you one question? And I'll let you go back into the, sure. to the, to the safety of silence. Um. How did you find the show? How long have you been listening? Maybe you just found us. I like to find these things out so I know how to focus our reach. Right. I've been I've gotten your uh, messages for a while. I I I was I had surgery on Saturday, yesterday. I mm -hmm. fell down and I had to go from one hospital to another for plastic surgery. Oh. And I was lying in bed and my my iPad just came up a pop up that um, bear with me my mouth has stitches that um, mm -hmm. no problem on. so I was listening to the news on the iPad and I just clicked onto you and I I listened to this brother teaching and I thought oh my goodness <laughs> he's right on target and wow. so I wanted to call in I I you know I'm not totally disoriented but um. I understand. What he was saying about the God that's within us. It's more like a level of consciousness that I, I am assuming that's what he's talking about. Yes. Like we have to do and we have to reach a higher level of consciousness and everything, the capabilities that's in us to create and the words that we speak and what we do. And I, I, I'm thinking that's what he's talking about because I don't. I don't believe in religion whatsoever. I I have my own views on that, and I really would not be angry if someone burned all the churches down. Forgive me for saying that, but that's just how I feel, <laughs> because I think, no, I've said it a long time ago, Right. and I think, it, you know, you cannot take a religion that has enslaved your people, and you go every Sunday rushing to that religion and make it yours. Thank you. If if that religion, okay, is supposed to be about love, then ask yourself, why do they flee whenever you enter their churches? Why is the community what it is? If that religion was supposed to be about love, 
why did they enslave all of the Africans? Some of them didn't even make it to the United States and the Caribbean, where I'm from. Uh, they threw them overboard into the seas, you know, to be eaten by sharks and so forth. And what they did to the Indians, how can this be a religion about love? This religion was given to the black man to subjugate him. If you had something to think of, yeah. something great that would happen, you would endure what they're doing to you. This religion is false. It's a false religion. And it really kills me when a lot of African, I hate to say the word African Americans or whatever. Yeah, we understand. When I like to call us melanin people. Yes. We are different shades, but we are yes. melanin people. Yes. When want to rush to this white man's religion that he has created for us to keep us in bondage, mm -hmm. you know, and black preachers overall need to be ashamed of themselves for yes. pimping the black communities. The seed that they tell you to sow, it's the seed, it's not about money. And the tithe, I want to get back to, if you really study their religion and read the whole book, you will see that the tithe does not belong to you. Mm -hmm. The tithe had to do with the land of Israel, and for the people, it belonged to the high priest. All of the people, if you read the book, if you believe in the book, for example, and you want to argue with me about it, then mm -hmm. go back to the book, and you will see that the tithe was not even about money, it was about agriculture, and it was given to the high priest, okay? It was given to the tribe of Le Le Levi, and the 10% of the tithe was given to the Kohen, the high priest, and the rest was divided among the tribe of Levi and the poor in the community. The church tell you, don't follow the Old Testament. That's the law. But why do they go back to the law to enslave you? When are people going to wake up and see it does not compute? You know, it does not compute. And I do believe what you say about the universe. It's like it's a force, basically. And that's what you do is what is going to come back to you. You know, you treat people with kindness, you'll get back kindness and so forth. And all of that is spirituality. It's dealing with uh, people. Absolutely. And the religion actually came to destroy that. Absolutely, my sister. You're right on par. I want to thank and you. I'm sorry, my lip is swollen. No, 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 my sister. You, you have, you have, you have done brilliantly. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you are right on par, and that's why I said that. Truth. You know, the thing is that you know, speaking you, you, truth is truth resonates. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us as people, as black people, if we would realize and come to consciousness, as you says, we would realize a whole different world, and we would see ourselves in a whole different. A whole different fear, so to speak, but the, the, but the fact is that we this 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 prison that we are in called religion is preventing us from really seeing and come to know who we truly are. So you are absolutely on par, and I really appreciate those thoughts. You see, because what you have said is very important. Go ahead, my sister. What I what I was going to say is, um, I, although I should be in bed lying down, I came to my office. And I'm working on a book called Light of the Afflicted Soul. <laughs> wow. And I wanted to mention about religion, and I said, and I'm leaving that out. But I think now I'm going to put my piece into it. Yes. Because I think that sometimes when you silence, when you remain silent, the worst thing that could happen to anyone who has some sort of light or insight is to remain silent. Silent about it. When you remain silent, people are on a way. They feel things, but they yes. just need someone to tell them yes. so they can move forward. And yeah. I think the time, the season for the church is coming to an end. I really do, because people are awakening. There is so much power, so much power within the within melanin people. And I, I, I say that, Lance, because they give black. There was no such thing called black people, Okay. We had melanin. The original people had melanin in this skin. If you want to say a thing, we were melanin people. Mm -hmm. And there's so much power and knowledge we've had that we've lost over the years. Yes. You know, everything has been, it's like curses placed upon people, make you forget where you came from, religion forced upon you to make you think this is the way and not the way that you were taught. Uh, but you look at the wisdom of the Egyptians and so forth. They don't want you to know any of that. Mm-hmm. And I just think the, things are happening now in this world. And because Dick Gregory said one thing before he died, 
and he went Trump won, and he said it's over. <laughs> It's over. <laughs> and, and if you don't know what he meant by that, then you're not paying attention to what's going on. And I, I, I honestly believe that the people need, to, when black people come together to build a community, the one thing that the white man fears more than anything in the world is that the black race, well, quote unquote, black race will unite. Yes, absolutely. That's the one fear of the black man. And if people have not realized it, that they better start realizing it now. Once you understand who you are, once you understand the power that you have, what you can do, you'll realize that the one thing that terrifies your adversary is, is the unity of your yes. people. Yes, if yes. You, if you're not united, they can conquer you. If yes. you're divided, and which is what's happening now. But if you realize this and you come together and you unite, that's one way you can take the white race down, is yeah. to unite as one. Yes. And yes. that's all I can say right now. Save my lip. <laughs> well, yes. Well, my well, we're sending you positive energy that everything Thank heals you. up properly. And, you know, even though it's a very, very unfortunate thing that happened and, and you, you're, in, you're in great pain, you know, look, it brought us together. Because you're looking at your tablet, you know, something of what we're doing popped up. You clicked on it, and we're here together. And long after you heal up, we'll still be together. So that is a positive out right. of all of this. Yes. Right. Yes, my sister. Peace and blessing to you. And we hope that um, you have a speedy recovery. You know, um, the God, you. the God within you will will do that. You know, you have the knowledge, you have the power to to make yourself well. You know, and so the thing is that, you know, as I said, you know, we're, we're, we're looking to the wrong place and to the wrong source, as you rightly said also. And so now that we know these things is a matter of, you know, get our community to see them, to open up to them. And that's why we can't stop doing what we're doing, because mm -hmm. we know what needs to be done. And so we must do it, no matter what the consequence is. Because for me personally, I'm not afraid of anyone or anything, and I'm not going to stop speaking these things because the reality is that's right. if they kill, decide to kill me tomorrow, I kill all of us tomorrow, then there's many more is going to rise up. That's right. You see, so they thought they'd get rid of Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, and all these brothers back then, and they thought that would be it. But no, you know, they're sadly mistaken. And so now the world, is, it, world has come alive with, with people like yourself and mine, and this great internet that they have created is going to be their Achilles heel. They didn't thought that it was going to be that way. But you see, the reality is yeah, the, right. the, the, the universe, as I said, is, 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 is balancing out the scale, so to speak, because it has to happen. Because again, the principle that cannot change, and as I said, I, the universe does not go right. off, go off laws, go off principle, because the principle will never change. And that principle says that the scale of justice must be balanced. And that's why I tell people right. today, if you look at young people today, they have rejected religion more than any other, more than any other generation. This generation today has rejected religion because the ancestors and the universe has put it into them to reject this monster that is, that is continued to desecrate and destroy the black community. You see? And so mm -hmm. we must expose this yeah. demon called religion because it's, it is a demon. It is. You see? It is, it's the adversary of the people. Exactly. The enemy of the people, I should say. It, 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 is. it is. It is. You know, it, it absolutely yeah. is. And that's, and that's for me, like I said, you know, when I dig deep into this thing and you realize what it is, just like you talk, like I tell most people, my sister, we, you know, and Brother Kojo and, and the others out there, most people that claim to be so-called Christian has never read the book. <laughs> never read the book. Because if they did read the book, they would see all the lies and the hypocrisy. Right. You see, I totally agree. You know, so so that's where we have to we have to we have to question people. And when I get with people who call themselves religious people, and you start to point these things out to them, you can see they back up very quickly. Because I, my, one of my questions that I use to draw people out, 
And a lot of them, as soon as I say this to them, they stop for a minute before they even say anything else. So I, I asked them this question. I said, have you ever seen a black angel in heaven? Have you ever seen one? How come, how come the, the God that you're serving is white and, 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 the, and Jesus who is saving you is white? Okay, everything about God and heaven and Jesus is white. Nothing, no blackness there. So explain to me where the black angels how come you don't have any? Uh, that, you know, was the first thing I realized was a lie. And I said, you know, if Yeshua, Jesus, they've made white, and we all know back then uh, the people were darker people, skin tones. If they've lied and made him a blue eye, a uh, Roman god, what other what other things are they lying about? Dear a Lord. long, long, long time ago, I asked myself that. Yes. A long time ago, I asked myself that, and you know, but you know, it's people are lazy. Yes. And that's the lie. They 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 want feel good, something to make them feel good, no matter how deceptive. Yes. As long as you can walk around and feel good, they want things instantaneously done for them as opposed to working to a common goal and ground. This is not going to happen. You, I'm going to talk to everyone there. and Forget about my lip, but you've got to listen to me. You cannot hate your brother. You cannot be envious of your brother, not wish him well when he succeeds and expect good things to happen to you. The yes. universe will not give that back to you. Exactly. When people are succeeding in life, you've got to be happy for them. Yes. You have to be happy yes. for them. You've got to give thanks for them. Yes. Okay? Yes. You cannot be envious. I've met too many people that were very envious of me, that have done things to me, and I just cannot understand why. What is jealousy? I was not, I grew up in the U.S. Virgin Islands in St. Thomas, and right. my mother always told me, never be envious of anyone because of the material possession. Yes. For while you sleep peacefully, you are unaware of how they sleep at night. Exactly, my sister. Exactly, you my sister. You cannot be envious of your people. You pull your people up. And if there's an actress or actor on TV doing something, don't go around spreading rumors on social media about that person or look at Holly Berry. No. You support your people. You support your own. Don't fall into the trap of dividing. Right. Because when you divide, you're going to allow them to conquer. And those of you who have been successful, help someone else up the ladder. Exactly, you know, my sister. The, the higher up you go, it's too much for you to have for yourself. You've got to help other people. And when you do that, we'll get back to the place we used to be. And I believe we're going to get there. But we have to start teaching this to other people, you know, yes. helping each other. Yes. Helping each other make it. And when people knock it into their heads until you get it into this thick skull that, you know, we have to come together as one because divided, they can conquer us. United, they can't yes. stop us. And we have to stop the nonsense fighting each other and killing each other. We've got to stop it now, like yesterday. It's got to stop. Yes, my sister, we, we really, truly have to get into the frame of mind. And like I said, you know what? What I appreciate now is that I've seen... Before, more than any other time, really, I've seen more black people come into consciousness more than any other time that I've experienced. So it tells me, the universe tells me that there is something happening. And, and, and if, if we don't realize something is happening and something great is about to take place. And so, therefore, we want to make sure that we are a part of that. You see, we want to be a part of that. And like I said, you know what? One thing, one thing I love I love to see my black brothers and sisters thrive because when it makes me feel good when they have a nice vehicle, a nice house, they are doing well, they have a business or whatever it is, it should, it should propel us to be drawn to them. You see, but what is happening? Because what I'm saying is we learn these ways from our master. We learn the ways of selfishness. We learn the ways of it's only about me. And so if it's not me, it must not be you. So we have to step out of that because it's not the way our ancestors used to live and believe. So once we get out of that right. and start uplifting each other, you see, once, you see, even this thing where they talk about Moses and, up, and lifting up the serpent and all these different things, okay? If, you, if people know what these things mean, when you lift each other up, 
you're raising the vibration and the energy. That's what you're doing. You see, the negative, the negative is going down. And the positive is going up. That's what needs to happen. You see. And so all these things that are keeping us apart. Because like I tell black people. Go to these, the, 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 these, the, these people that run in your church organization. And ask them these questions. Why is it that your ministers. The Baptist ministers. The Seventh-day Adventist ministers. And all these different people that run your church. They go to the same school. Of theology. They go to the same school. To go and learn what they're doing to you. So how come. They divide up all these different. Name churches. Why is it that there's not. There's not if religion is true. Why, why don't you have one religion. Okay. With one unified teaching. And, and yet. And yet, even in the same Bible, in the book of Revelation, he says, Babylon the Great, the world empire of false religion. So even the Bible telling you that these religions are false. The same Bible that they write. <laughs> right. You see, you see what I'm saying? You, you should know by, just by the election and how you called, you, people call themselves Christians, uh, what they have accused other people for, and damn them to hell. They make excuses for a liar, potential rapist, whatever. I don't want to use Lashon Hara to discuss this man. Pedal, we pedal, have an pedal. office. Yeah, they use all, make pedal, pedal, all pedal, sorts too. of excuses mm -hmm. for them. Yes. For him. And because they're in his pocket. And yes. how can you trust a religion? If a religion does not put out love towards all of humanity, regardless of skin tone, nationality, whatever you want to call it, you know? If a religion does not accept all of humanity and teach humanity love towards all people and helping everyone, you need to run away from that. Exactly. No one is better than the other to go around saying, well, oh, this was the curse of Ham. And I want to go back when anyone tells you, well, you were this way because you were cursed. If you believe in the Bible and so forth and you want to follow it, and you were cursed because you're descendants of Ham, let's go back Canaan was cursed, not Ham. Ham was never cursed. Exactly. By Noah, it was Canaan that was cursed, and ha and Noah, okay, had three sons supposedly, and Ham had other children beside Canaan. But they want to say all of the black race was cursed, and I shut people down. I said, back off, go back and read your Bible because it said Canaan was cursed, not even Ham, and Ham had many sons. Right. Okay. Right. And then, then they talk about, well, you are the curse because your hair looks so and so. Like, oh God, you've got curly hair, you've got nappy, you've got your hair is different. I'm like, well, it also says in the Bible that the God of the universe, you said, his people, he said, I will sustain their identity. Right. So whose identity is more sustained than the black people? Wake up. E hello. E exactly. Whose identity is more sustained. Anyone can pass for this. We can't. Our identity is so sustained. We can't pass for anything but who we are. There you go, my sister. And that's why, you know, when I tell black people, I say, look here, you're, you're here. It curls for a specific reason. If you look at anything that conduct electricity, what it does, it curl. Okay? You have these, mm -hmm. you look at, go to a plant, an electrical plant, and look at what, where the electricity generates. You see that coil? What they call a coil for a year condition, anything that generates electricity, it coils. Okay? So, you know, one of our brothers says, you know, I mean, Brother Keith, which is famously said, black is not a color, it's a vibration. We need to know that. Oh, I remember that, yes. I remember that. Okay? It I is it too. is not a color, it's a vibration. It is the God vibration. You see, if you, one thing we need to realize, my sister, and as I said it before, and if black people just look and think, everything that is created in this society, it was created by black people. The, the fact is that when, 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 these, when, when black people were, were enslaved and colonized, these people that came out of Europe, they know, know nothing about farming. They had no idea. 
They had no idea about farming land. And then they make it out like black people don't know how to farm, they don't know how to do this. It's, it, all these things are lies. Black people were the builders. They were the builders. Black people built up Europe. When we go to Europe and we look at these buildings in Europe and we think, oh, these Europeans are great people. No, they did not build these buildings. Black people did the labor work on these buildings. Black people were architecture. Black people were engineers. And if you go and find and research it through history, you, you, we will see that. You see, Washington, D.C. was laid out was laid out by a black man. You see what I'm saying? So You know, Jack, the Jack Daniels yeah, whiskey that made Daniels so much thing. money Yes. Uh, over the years. Yes. That's by black man, too. And physiology, anesthesia was created by black men in Africa that saved all of their, all of their lives when they were having kids. It was black men in Africa that invented anesthesia. Right. Exactly. And they just finally... Well, because- Right. Brother Keston, you notice that every every type of architecture, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm in D.C., but every architecture that they build that has a certain significance is always built by, they always want to have a black person build it because they understand the spirituality and the creativeness of a black person. So exactly. Like about D.C., Benjamin... Ben, Benjamin Bandy Curry right. outlined D.C. in a certain way, and shortly after he created how he wanted it to be, they kicked him out and had somebody complete his work. Exactly. You know, so these are the things that we're dealing with. Exactly, my brother. And, and that's what I'm saying is, um, you know, you have Carver, is what I'm saying is. George Washington Carver is a typical example. If you look at this man, this man was brilliant. Okay, brilliant. And so much things that we have today and use today comes from that one man, one African. And, and, and when you come right now and you see how much African has been denied from the things that they create and that was stolen from them and other people get the credit for it. You see, so we can't trust a society that has lied to us from the very beginning of time. That we know with these people from once they come into 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 being and come into into the land of Africa. You see what I'm saying? So we have to realize what is going on and that we have constantly been tricked and we want to become like our oppressor. We want to look like our oppressor and we will do anything to be like our oppressor. You see what I'm saying? This. Even religion teach you that one day everybody, when everybody go to heaven, you're going to turn white. Basically, you're going to have long flowing hair. You're going to, you know. Why is so? And, and all these things, it's just lies. There's, there's no factual evidence to any of these things that you have been taught. So your religion, as I said before, is doing you nothing but injustice. It hasn't done anything good for you. And if there's anything that your religion has done good for you, I would like to know. And they're laughing all the way to the bank with it. <laughs> you know, I tell you, my sister, we have to, this is where we have to really look and tell our people, please start questioning things again. Stop leaving your common sense, your way of reasoning outside of these church door when you walk inside of there. Because your old being inside of you is questioning and saying to you, something is wrong here, but we ignore it because we have been taught to ignore that spirituality that we have inside of us. We, we suppress it in every way we can because religion is one of the biggest suppressor to our spirituality. It has all to do with vibration. If you're thinking... If you think in negative thoughts, you're going to get negative results. Absolutely. If you think in positive terms, you will have positive results. If you want to change things in your life, start changing the way you think. The year That's you go, my thing. sister. Because before, before anyone created anything, plants and my brother, you know, it had to be a thought in the mind. Yes. And then they worked on that thought, and yes. it became a you know tangible yes. item. Yes. Yes. So when we think negatively about people. We speak negatively about people, 
that's going to come right back on us. That's why we have to be careful of the things we say about our fellow brothers. If you have, uh, I, and I'm not saying that we don't make excuses for someone, but if you have a man who cheats on his wife with his girlfriend and cheats on her with many other girlfriends, you can say he's an adulterer, he's a cheater, but you can also say, you know, Leo is a man best known in the community for loving everyone, you know? This, and let people draw upon that. And you, people who know him knows what you're talking about. Or just be silent about it. Uh, people have to start using their heads. Yes. And not just going with the flow. You know, you need to start using your head. You need to be cognizant of what's happening around yes. you. Yes. And start thinking. I think when the problem with a lot of black people today is that they just don't think. Absolutely, my sister. We, we're, not, we're not thinking and we're not reasoning. You see, and, and as you said right there, we look for all the negativity we can find to tear people down instead of to look for positivity to build up. And so that's what we have to do. We have to look for the positive. Bring them up to that level. Raise the vibration. And so if you stop speaking negative of this person, then guess what? There is no other person going to find negative to speak of this person. You see. And so we are balancing things out now. You see. So we must grow. You see. I tell black people, say, if your sister have a, 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 a nail a nail place or a hair salon or whatever, uh, a barber shop, your black brother have, or your black sister have a barber shop or whatever it is in their community or any business place, don't look for, ex oh, they're too expensive, that's why I don't buy from them. Oh, she's this, she's that, and she's the other. You see, instead of to say, I'm glad to see the sister making progress, and I'm going to support her in every right. way that I can. See how different you will feel about yourself, and see how different everybody else will start to feel about that that brother or sister, and see how different your community will become. You see? Yeah, so, and it's going to come back to you, too. The positive exactly. energy you put out is the positive that's going to stick to you. You've got to be careful about the mind and the mouth, the, the, your thoughts and your mouth, because whatever you're thinking is what you're going to get. Exactly. If you think negative about someone, you're going to get that negativ negativity back on you. And I keep telling people all the time, Lift up each other. Don't cry each other down. Lance, you need to have a show on witchcraft. Yes. One day. Yes, yes. We touched because on those things. I, had, I didn't believe in it. Yes. Yeah. My father's from England. Mm -hmm. My my mom is in, is in St. Thomas. Right. And I grew up in the Caribbean, and you know, you hear about things, but you're not around it. You don't know. Right. And I thought that was for, like, maybe, you know, really still in Massachusetts or whatever, and I'm telling you right now, I and and these are black people in America that are practicing that stuff. Oh, big time! Stop. Oh, big time! And I've, Let me ask you something. Stop. And I didn't know that until they tried to harm me with it. Right. Oh, I, I, I've, I've had it. Have seen my good. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I've had it done to me right Someone right at my that? front door. I mean, I, I was doing a show one really? night. Yeah, I was doing a show one night, and after the show, I usually stay up for an hour or two, and um. My thing is, okay, we have African spirituality and things that they try to scare us from that is part of us, that they've hijacked and try to use against us. You know, we know that part. But then we have the other people who have intentions of trying to use something that is righteous mm -hmm. on, on a negative uh, a, a level against us. So on that level, I'll say that was done uh, to us because there were things placed at the front door. And this is why we put an iron gate further out so that you can't even touch the door or go in that area and install different things. You know, you know how that goes. But Mrs. Scurve yeah. woke up early like she usually does. I'm the night bird. And I didn't go to bed until like five o'clock. She woke up at six thirty seven. So she went to the front door, you know, to sweep, because she's always cleaning. And she came back and said inside and said, Lance, there's something out here I think you need to see. So there were some well-placed bird feathers with some bird seeds, but there was no real bird out there. Like if a cat ran into a bird and caught it and killed it, that type of thing. We had, we had swept outside the day before, cut the grass, pruned everything, watered everything down and left it meticulous. And that was going into the evening. So she just went to do a light sweeping out in the front there were no bird feathers all over the place like there was a struggle. 
There was no noise outside at the time, which it doesn't take much, you know, to go and place something at somebody's door. But this was definitely done on purpose. There were also over the next few months and I could say the next few years. Yeah, we live across the street from a lake. There are animals that will fight each other and die. But how come they were dead animals that didn't have any visible uh, uh, marks on them that were placed behind a pot or in a particular area in the yard each and every time, every six weeks to two months, four or five times that we saw this. So, yes, people do believe that they can come at you a certain way, but... You know, when they come at you that way, the spirit that we have of positivity and connecting this to the creator, our mission can't be stopped. So if you're taking your time and your energy, you're not going to scare me with that because at the root of what you think you're doing, we're connected to that root. Understand? So you can't boss us around with what is in us on a righteous level, and you can't scare us from what the white man doesn't want us to know about us when you use your wayward techniques to come at us. Because you know what? It's 2018, and I'm still here. Now, when the creator says my time is going to expire, so be it. But until then, I'm going to do what I'm told to do in my spirit. Brother Keston here is going to do the same thing, and it's not going to stop. So waste your time coming at us. Waste your time holding those ill feelings toward us because in essence, I'm a conversion machine. You give me positive energy, I use the positive energy. You throw negative energy at me, whether you throw it to me in my face or you harbor it in your heart, I will pick it up, convert it, and use it for the positive. So I want to thank all of you for giving us energy because at the end of the day, we're not going to use ours for anything negative. We're going to use it for positive. You see? So that's how we roll. And I think the proof is in the body of work and how we are trying to walk. Yeah. And yeah. Also, I just want to say for the next three minutes or so, we're going to wrap it down because we do have to go. Sister, I don't know your name. You don't have to give me your real name, but I did add you into the mobile text alert uh, 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 system that we have that every time we do a show, it goes out. I do have your number. I'm not creepy that way. Um, I see it and everything, but it's completely private. But for the sake of identification, I'll just give me a name. It doesn't have to be your government name. And I do want to get with you about that witchcraft show since you brought it up. And I do. it does sound like you have something to say about that. And that is a show that I would like to schedule ahead of time so other people can see it and say, okay, I'm going to mark my time and join on in. That won't be a show that we just fire up and throw up at the last minute. So if it's possible, you do see the contact information on the screen if you need a screen. My, everybody knows my number. It's here, 407 gmail.com. Please contact me, sister, if it's possible. And maybe not right now because you're still healing up, but I would like to either, either even go one-on-one -on -one with you and do it live and go up and see who else calls in because we can vibe on that. Um, give us your last thoughts, Brother Kojo and sister, um, and then we're going to let Brother Keston wrap it down, and then we're going to move on to the next one. Um, tonight, Brother Holler's going to come on and speak about the wayward sisters out there because we love our sisters. So we're not saying all of our sisters are wayward, but we have to go in on their behavior because they're affecting our young kids because they are an example, but a poor example. Um, and that'll be tonight. I can't say the time, but maybe 10, 11, 1130, around in there, but it's a definite. Finish up your thoughts and um, just know that these shows are perpetual. And when we continue, we're going to pick up from where we left off. But, but talk to us. Wrap it down. Everybody speak at once now. <laughs> Brother Kojo, sister, you have anything more you want to say? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here. here. I'm dead. Are you good? Um, nah. I, I, yeah, like, I just want to say, um, I agree with everything y'all said. Like, this religion is the very thing that's, you know, one of the biggest things that's keeping us in bondage. So, like the sister said, you know, Dick Gregory said, this shit is over. You know, a lot of people sit there and tell me, oh, like, you woke and you got all of this information. We in the information age. The internet can help a lot of people out. It didn't save my life from the programming, you know. So I'm forever thankful for that. And I just want others to really do their research and see where these things came from, how we were born into it, 
and how we need to let go of it. And just to add on to what the sister said at the end is that there's been a conflict in our spirituality. Our, our people, you know, before the Europeans came, we had our own spiritual system, but it has been tainted. So the jealousy that we have amongst each other, we use, a lot of us have used these, this, these very spiritual things to harm one another. Me, for example, you know, in my family, a lot of things have happened where a person wasn't a Christian, but because of jealousy and because of the spiritual systems that we had, people were doing things like juju, what people would call juju or voodoo. And because another individual didn't know no better, they ran to the church. Now, certain pastors and prophets and stuff, they understand certain concepts of our spirituality. So instead of showing the person or showing the person that this is what's going on, they've used religion to enslave our people. But like the sister said, it's a two-edged sword. So I encourage everybody that knows, you know, that wants to understand our spirituality, like don't be fearful, you know what I'm saying? Reclaim what's yours and walk in your own divinity. And as it says in the Bible, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Is, is, is the thought that you have to have. Once you know, like Brother brother Lance was saying, once you know that these very things are you, you can't be touched. And when you know that energy cannot be cannot be destroyed, it can only be um, transferred, you know that even after death, just like our brothers and sisters in 1804, even after death, we come back and we multiply. I just wanted to leave it there, so I'll let the sister finish over. Our sister... Well, when it comes to death, the people really die. This, you know, this is just a body. Nothing that's alive and that lives can actually die. Nothing that is dead can actually live. The soul never dies. The soul is you. This is just a body. The body goes back into the ground, and the soul goes wherever you want to call it, heaven, hell, or wherever in the universe the soul goes to. It goes. But, Lance, what I have gone through... I was a divorced mom. I raised my children alone, you know, and what I have gone through, everything I touch, everything I was touching would turn to gold. <laughs> and I'm going to email you and I'm going to give you my name. Yes. And I'm going to tell you things. And we are going to discuss this because I want people to know that this thing is real. Yes. And whenever something in your consciousness tells you something is wrong about a person or something just doesn't feel right, listen, listen to it, you know, because a lot of times that person is not for you, and we can't control everyone, we can't make everyone be for us, we can't make everyone, you know, have our back, because even no, your enemies don't know anything about you, your enemies can't even touch you, as a matter of fact, it is the ones that w know when you get up in the morning, the time you go out for a run, or what time you leave for work, mm -hmm. you know, those are the ones that actually can harm you because they reveal that sort of information to your enemy. And like people will call it your Judas or whatever. I call it your, your, your Iego. Mm -hmm. You remember the play called Othello when he yes. had his wife killed because he listened to Iego and so forth? Mm -hmm. So it was, it's your Iegos that are destroying. You've got to be careful what you reveal to other people. Thank God I had the common sense and the wisdom to know that this particular woman was asking too many personal questions about my life. And had I revealed that to her, I would not be here talking to you. It's, it's sad enough that when I was in outside sales, she came and asked me for a pocketbook. I had a lot of pocketbooks. I gave her a nice one. And a week and a half later, she came back and asked for a wallet. I said, well, the holidays are simply approaching for a gift. I'll get you a wallet. Oh, no, no, I can take one. I said, but they're leather wallets, but they've been used. No, that's okay. I'll take one. And Lance, nothing in my life has actually been the same. I mm. would touch anything, it would turn to gold, because I, I thought in positive terms, and I just could not understand it. And many years later, when someone told me, she's stealing your blessings, I'm like, how can anyone steal your blessings? <laughs> and then I was told what was going on, and that's when I realized, oh, my God. All of these things that were happening to me, I began to connect the dots and see what this woman was doing to me. And if, when we talk again, I will tell you what was happening in my house. Wow. What was going on in my house? And you, Lance, 
you, you, I just cannot say anymore because it's... We, we want to we really put it all down for the show. I would never cut you off, but you're, you're piquing my interest right. and I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. And I would say, wow, you, you're piquing it right. so much. I'm going to do a holiday show later on. I'll say, listen, call me two in the morning and we'll do it. No, I'm just playing. But um, we have to do that ASAP because I, I, I hear your, okay. your, your enthusiasm to touch on this subject and you do have a story to tell. And I truly and totally appreciate you. And you know what? You want to hear a joke? I'm glad I tricked you into talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't trick you. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, in the beginning, you were like, yeah, I'm just going to be quiet, but I'm just so glad that you're here. I didn't trick you. I don't have that in me. I would ask you straight Thank up. Thank you. Um, but I do, I do know one thing. You're healing with every passing moment because you sound a lot better than you did when you called. Not that you sounded bad, but your spirit is so uplifted yeah. more so now, and I'm glad for that. Um, send me the information. Let us connect tonight somehow. I won't talk your ears off too much. Um, I'm going to have Brother Keston wrap down the last few minutes or whatever, and we're going to end it now because I have to make a run and he has to make a run, but you know we're perpetual. We're like firemen. We're always there. Even if he's out on the road and you say, hey, get Brother Keston, just like on Batman when they shine a light up in the clouds, I'll get his number, get him three-way, and get him right on here on the show. So we're never too far away. You know you can always call me anytime. So um, send me your information, and there's Brother Habib on, on, in the chat room. Send me your information. Everything is here. Um, Brother Keston, Wrap it down for us, and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm just talking to you for the first time, but I love you righteously, sister. Thank you for being you, Kojo, Jay Logic, everybody in the chat room. Don't be mad at me. There's too much to list. And um, Brother Keston, wrap it down, brother. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Truly appreciate all you guys out there. You know, always remember, you know, once we continue to love and uplift each other, to give each other the knowledge that we need, we're always going to be vibing on the right level. You see, we only can go higher because we have gone to the bottom. So we must come to the top and you must realize this important point. In order for goal, in order for goal to come to the top, it must be eaten up to a certain degree. We have been that goal that have been fully tested as a people. Because we survive things that no one else on this planet could survive. And we are still here to tell the story. So you are the true goal, my brothers and sisters. Know that. You must believe that. You must realize that you have gone through all the tests. And you are still here. You passed with flying colors. So please come to get to know yourself, know who you are, because if the moment that you realize who you are, you're going to soar. I promise you that. So love yourself. Love each other. Always uplift each other. Never tear each other down. Never allow yourself anymore to be caught up in this trap of religion. Please. Please. Examine this thing called religion very carefully because it is, it is your greatest, it is your greatest enemy. It is one of your greatest enemy on this planet. So examine it and free yourself from that dangerous thing called religion. You see, peace and love, my brothers and sisters. Always good vibing with you. Thank you, my dear sister, Brother Kojo. One love and peace as always. And other brothers and sisters who are out there, nothing but love. Peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. Peace and love. Yes. The organizer has ended this Uber conference. Goodbye. Yo, yo, this is Brother Kamisi Fox with the Land Scurve theme a cappella. Let's go. Is there a topic of discussion and you thought about it? Tune in to Land Scurve show and let's talk about it. Let's break it down and chop it up. What you get on radio and TV is something not enough. He gives you news and views with no gimmicks. He puts the journalism to the outer limits. 
Turning negatives into positives Making the planet Earth a better place to live The baddest man on the internet